Hello everybody, this is Andrew Kraus here. Today I'm going to continue talking about some music theory as it pertains to popular music. Um, the song I chose today is uh, Wishing Well by Juice World, um, the late Juice World. Um, I was a huge fan of his music. I'm still a huge fan of his music. And uh, before we cover his song, um, you know, rest in peace. It's uh, very sad. We should all uh, remember that, you know, regardless of what happens in our careers, we should do the best to um, take care of ourselves and uh, ultimately nothing can save us from addiction. Um, really, really sad story. He was like nine years younger than me when he passed away and his music's had a huge impact on me. So um, if you're watching from somewhere else, Juice World, hopefully I did okay with your beat. All right, let's go ahead and look at Logic. Um, now, again, the song is Wishing Well, and like uh, the other songs on this channel where I cover um, that are um, popular songs owned by a record label or another artist, uh, in an attempt to not get my video banned, I um, am not going to play the original audio. I'm just going to play the instrumental that I created. We're here in Logic Pro. Um, every instrument that I'm using is a default instrument. I didn't do that in my last video, and I sort of thought... Um, Eventually, it'd be cool for me to uh, give you guys these MIDI files, if that's even legal for me to do. Um, and if I use default instruments, um, they'll at least open in your um, in your Logic session. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and listen to the instrumental. Um, again, you won't hear the vocals on it because we're not hearing uh, Juice World. This is my rendition, and uh, the vocals really carry this song. Um, but here is the instrumental. Here it is. I'll stop it there since um, essentially the instrumental starts to repeat um, and I believe we've heard every uh, unique section um, so far. Uh, cool so like I said I, I played that on guitar so you're hearing uh, my live guitar but you're also hearing some MIDI um, guitar and if we look at the the MIDI guitar you'll be able to see um, how the, the theory of the guitar line um, and ultimately, it actually sounds like it could be MIDI in the original song, um, but I wanted to play it as well because it's fun. Um, so a couple things. Uh, one, we are in the key of C major. So let me just do that in this window so you can see it. C major is going to have all of these white keys on our keyboard or our piano roll. You're looking at only a computer screen. All right, so every uh, note that we have in the song is one of these seven different notes. You see eight, but that is a C and that is a C. So each of those is one note happening twice. So that's seven different notes that are in this scale, C major. And again, um, like every other scale in music and chords, we skip scale tones to create the chord. So there's a one chord. And then the other chord we're going to have in the song is a four chord that's an f major chord notes in that are f a and c cool um so that's our theory um now we basically we the first 
three notes, if we solo this strat, we're, we're going to E, F, C, and then A, E, F, C, and then it sort of repeats. Um, I guess this is the phrase that repeats. Um, nice. Now, um, again, uh, we're landing on C, the lowest note, so that's a pretty standard for whatever key you're writing in uh, when you write a melody or a line. The lowest note or the note you resolve to or use the most is usually the tonic, which is a fancy way of saying the 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 one or the main note of whatever key we're in. So if I'm in A major, that would be an A. If I'm in F sharp, uh, mixolydian, that would be an F sharp. Uh, cool. One piece of inf interesting information is that uh, we're in 4-4, four, four, we're at 150 beats per minute, um, but and we're playing eighth notes, so it's not a triplet, but the notes are in groups of three. So that creates kind of a cool uh, rotation of where the notes are happening, especially later in the song when we get the drums as well. Um, so that's just an important note. Uh, and then uh, the second time or the second measure, second phrase the third measure where we go a back to e we get six a's so that's like this three and three together six so we we could say that this is a parallel phrase if we took these rhythms and moved them over we'd actually see that they completely line up all right so that's what we mean by a parallel phrase that is a rhythmic phrase which is an idea or something we use a word we use in melody writing um so yeah that's what's happening with the guitar we hear the same line down an octave so again it's the same thing um if we look at them together we'll see that it's the same stuff in octaves cool so that takes care of the first part which is also like one of the main parts of the hook later in the beat. Um, then we get our bass. Cool, so bass notes. Um, we st are starting on an A. So what's kind of interesting about the bass, uh, starting on an A, A is going to be like A minor is a relative minor. So that note uh, has a special importance to the key. Let's go ahead and look at um, this guitar melody. So the notes are G, C, E, back to C again, G, C, E. We do get a D in there, but it's basically G, C, E. You may remember those notes um, from the chords when we were talking about them uh, in the beginning, but that's basically an arpeggio, a broken chord, playing a C major chord. With the exception of that D note, that's sort of a, a filler note, if you could. That note still is in our scale. Uh, if we think of that relative to a C major chord, the D w is the second, so I did a video on this, but if we're uh, Using the third and uh, we have more of a jazz terminology, we'd call that a major ninth. Um, if we are taking out that E, the third, and replacing it with the second, we would call that a sus two. Um, it's also very common that uh, musicians that are more schooled in playing popular music uh, call ninths suspended seconds, even though that may not be correct. Uh, in music, it's not I feel like it's not as important in 2020 to understand what is correct, but rather to interpret what uh, whoever is saying it means by that. You'll run into a lot of musicians that have heard words and may not use them correctly, but if you understand the way they apply that vocabulary, then it makes a lot more sense. Um, cool. So that first section, this all this stuff is that C major arpeggio. Let's listen to that on its own. Cool, let's talk about this part. That's A, C, E. Now if we put that E up here, 
we would notice that kind of looks like a chord. We're skipping scale tones. And it is. This is an arpeggio of an A minor chord, or the minor six in this key. Um, cool. And then all of that uh, repeats. What else do we have? We have a, a subtle chord progression. It's getting filtered. Uh, this is a pad, and I'm also playing this on guitar. We get a C major, and then an F major back to C um, major. And uh, that, what's kind of interesting about that is um, the chord I'd said in uh, this moment of time, we're on an A minor, and we're not using those chords. But A minor is actually pretty important to both of these. Um, if I were to add one more note to the F chord to make that a major seven, that A minor is uh, up here, right? This chord, C major, again, it's the relative major to A minor, so those have extra importance. And believe it or not, we have it overlapping two notes here from A minor. And if we were to add that note to an A minor, it's a minor seventh. Um, so even though these are different chords than what I mentioned in the other arpeggio, it still works because of the common thread that they come from. And the result of using that is um, getting, again, the major seventh sound, which is uh, pretty cool. I said it in the seventh chord video that it's one of my favorite chords. Um, this line of guitar is um, just the chord progression. I mentioned C, and then this is F, C, with the pad. Don't know if you heard that too, but there was a wrong note. That's from when I was sliding that around to show you the A minor chord. Um, cool. So what else do we have? The next uh, main thing to talk about, well, one, our drums. After all, this is in the hip hop vein. Um, and drums are uh, and bass are some of the more important instruments to that. Um, so what's going on here? We're in half time. Um, that means that our snare is happening on every beat three. Cool. Then we have some syncopation. Remember that means when we take a uh, kick drum, which is first on the downbeat, and then we start accenting beats that are not the specific downbeat, uh, that creates a cool um, sort of push and pull and uh, is in almost every hip hop song that you hear and a really cool um, thing that makes people want to dance. Everything else, uh, we have basically the eighth notes going. We have some sixteenths that are filled in. Let's hear the drums on their own. Some of my favorite trill hi hats. Again, that has its roots in like an MPC note repeat um, button. Uh, but even when we're in piano roll programming drums, we do that because uh, it's a sound that is part of hip-hop in general. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention, which is kind of the unique thing about the drums, is the rhythm around our clap. You'll notice that this top piece of MIDI, that's our closed hi-hat, that happens slightly before the snare. And what that does is it creates um, what would be called in the drumming world as a flam sound, or the sound of a grace note, as we would say in tonal music, but one note happening right before the other. Um, it gives it a cool... Blah, blah. gives it a cool um, attack to it uh, that you really pick up in the original song. So try to listen for that um, when you go back and listen to the original, which I encourage everybody to watch this video. Um, maybe even pull up his original, give him some stream uh, royalty, or again, his, uh, his descendants, since rest in peace, Juice World. Um, but at least uh, they'll get the credit for the streams, and you'll be able to check uh, what these sections sound like in his song. Cool. So um, we have these guitars in the beginning, that first 16 bars of the song, and then all, all of a sudden um, we still have the bass uh, sound. It's the same bass line as before. Uh, we have uh, the pad with the same chords, the C, then F, then C. That was happening in the section before. But then uh, the guitars go away, and we get a piano line. Now um, let's just solo the piano. Let's play it with our drums, so it's a little bit more interesting. All right, 
cool. Uh, so again, uh, every note that you see, I don't see a single black key in this. So again, we're in the key of C major, um, or if you want to think about it as a, as it relates relative to A minor, if you're more comfortable with minor keys. Um, an interesting thing is the piano starts on an A, but it goes into our C, C, and then we get on to an E. So all of these notes are in our C major chord. Um, they are also, all of these notes are in an A minor chord. So again, um, the sound of that, uh, we could call a full A minor. Um, yeah, uh, so again, like I showed you, A minor seventh has a C major in it. So A minor and C major are very, very uh, similar harmonies or overlapping. The difference would be that that minor third is more important in the um, A minor chord. Um, so like an A minor. So then we get this part, C, B, G, G, A, C, E. So since we get more of the C and G than an A, we're probably going like A minor, C major. Um, but again, uh, this is just kind of a pretty cool arpeggio um, influence, like chord comping, as I would probably describe this. We go back to what would be like the A minor, right? So A minor, C, A minor, back to C. Interesting thing about saying those chords is again, we have that, that pad that's playing the C and F. Um, so yeah, it might just be an A minor seventh that we wanna call that in the beginning. Um, but anyway, those are the notes. That's where they come from. Um, anything else that I want to say about it? Uh, we could say that this uh, that half step walking is obviously a motif in this uh, in this playing. Um, we get it from C B um, C B C B O. We get all the same. I was thinking we were going to get an F E. Perhaps we do later in the song. Um, yeah, so that C, B, walking down uh, becomes a really important thing uh, to this song. Cool. Uh, so that covers all of the different um, sections. Uh, let's look at this final fill sound. I'll just play the beat. So the notes there um, are A, G. Now, uh, I'll talk about a lot more of this in another video I plan on doing, which is going to be about uh, customizing presets in Logic's sculpture to fit your own sound design uh, desires. Uh, what I, you can see from down here, this is a pitch bend uh, automation line. You can access that in Logic by hitting that button and then scrolling for pitch bend. Uh, but we'll have to modify sculpture for that uh, to work the way uh, that you're hearing it. But again, uh, I will do a video um, where we do that. It's pretty fun building that sound. Uh, yeah, then we basically go back into what was the intro, but it's twice as long. And then our second section. Now he's singing w the words wishing well over a decent amount of that. Uh, so I would kind of all call that the, um, I would really call this like, the hook, maybe the the pre-chorus verse, so verse, pre-chorus, hook, or you could call it like verse, chorus, uh, post-chorus, verse, chorus, however you want to describe it. Basically, it goes section one, section two, section three, section one, section two, section three, and it keeps repeating that pattern even though section one becomes extended. Um, so. Yeah, I hope this was a helpful um, look at some music theory um, as it pertains to popular song. Um, I, again, I really love uh, this Wishing Well song. I think it's a great blend between uh, an alternative sort of uh, guitar-driven sound and a hip-hop sound. I love the vocal uh, effect and the vocal sound that they have on this. It's very like punk rock and hip-hop at the same time, um, which again, uh, would love to learn that vocal production um, as you'll see from my videos, I'm much uh, more familiar with the theory. But anyway, if this was helpful for you, uh, I'll put my email below. If you have any questions or songs that you'd like me to cover, feel free to reach out. Um, if you like this, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell for uh, notifications when I make a new video. 
And if you're curious about getting my uh, music theory textbook for electronic producers, I will link below, as well as links to my own music in case you're uh, curious in checking out what I do uh, besides make these tutorials. Awesome. Uh, thanks for uh, hanging out with me, and I'll see you next Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about music theory, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell for notifications when I make new content. If you want to find my music or my textbook or other free content, you can head over to my website. And if you want to find me on social media, my handle is Drew Sounds. Till next time.